All right, today, guys, we're going to go over section E, the verdict. Um, we finished translating Cicero's uh, defense of Milo, and now we're back to Asconius for um, the conclusion and how the jurors voted in this case. If you read the introduction in the textbook, um, they had 81 jurors and both the prosecution and the defense um, took turns removing jurors. And, you know, over 2000 years ago, uh, they were doing this and we do that today. Uh, as a trial lawyer, um, you take turns removing potential jurors um, so that each side kind of gets who they think, uh, you know, a fair shot at who they think would support you know, either prosecution or defense. So the introduction uh, states that they were able to remove 30. Um, they selected jurors based on class. And we've talked about class before. Um, we talked about how, you know, you have the ruling class. Um, you have the wealthy class. And you have kind of like representatives of the common people. Um it's not quite the common people, but it's uh, elected representatives of them. So, <clears throat> um, so 51 people decided the fate. So you might be surprised to think that this was that organized um, for uh, over 2,000 years ago. Um, but it's very similar, uh, aside from the class thing, um, to what we do today. All right, let's get into the translation. It's obviously a short one. Um all right, so each juror of the 51 jurors, that's a, we do not have juries of that size today, um, they had to write an A for absolve or a C for condemn. Absolve uh, means you would find him innocent. All right, <clears throat> so the first part starts off very simple. It's just uh, a lot of numbers here. 12... Senators condemned, that's the perfect tense. 12 senators condemned, six absolved. So right away we find out that the senators um, that were chosen as jurors for this, uh, most of them found Milo guilty. All right. Um, Trey Deckham is 13. 13 equites, you can just say that, or you can say knights, or you can say cavalry, but... Um, I'll just leave it as equites. 13 equites condemned, four absolved. All right, so it's not looking good for Milo here. 13, and then this term is given to you in the note. 13 officials of the treasury condemned, three absolved. So a lot of you assume Milo would be found innocent based on her comments on the last Ed, Ed puzzle, but no, he was pretty overwhelmingly voted guilty. All right, so Asconius kind of tells you why. And this is uh, grammatically a very hard sentence here. So they tell you the subject is Eudicus, which is judge or member of a jury. When we had it officially as vocab, it meant judge. But here, they're referencing the people making these votes. So we'll say jurors. All right. So the, we'll just say the jury. Um, the jury did not seem. Remember, when the verb to see is passive, it could translate as seem. So the jurors did not seem to have been unaware or to have been ignorant. That's a perfect active infinitive. Uh, to have been ignorant that they tell you this is an ablative absolute, but they don't tell you how to translate it, that with Milo um, unaware or with Milo not knowing from the beginning, that's kind of really tough to get. Um, oh, they give it to you, sorry. In the beginning or early on, that Clodius had been wounded. Uh, 
So once again, uh, the jury did not seem to have been unaware that with Milo um, unaware early on or from the beginning that Clodius had been wounded, but um, they had found out or found out for certain after he had been wounded um, you could should be able to identify this as pluperfect passive um, after he had been wounded that he had been killed uh, they tell you to put an se in here so it's kind of a, an indirect statement in the super past that he had been killed by order they give that to you of milo <clears throat> so uh, a lot of grammar going on here a lot of difficult grammar a lot of indirect statements um, Clodius had been wounded uh, Milo by order of Milo had been killed so the jury um, and maybe based on some evidence that was just lost in history that we don't know about uh, the jury found out and were pretty certain that Milo knew Clodius had been wounded in the fight and ordered by order of Milo, ordered him to be killed. All right, so that's how the jury voted. All right, Cicero did his best to shed some doubt. Um, obviously, some people bought it and went with it, but the jury overwhelmingly uh, felt that Milo was the architect of Clodius's death. So Milo doesn't look nominative, but it's nominative. Milo main verb here is from this deponent verb. Um, Milo set out into exile to Massilia. Uh, Massilia is a city, it's um, in France and modern day called Marseille uh, or Marseille. And it's really nice there. So uh, you kind of got off easy. Uh, being sent into exile was for somebody of his status was a big deal. However, usually you were sent to like a nice place. So, I mean, I don't know. It'd be like if you committed a crime and instead of going to jail, you were sent to Bermuda. All right. So Milo uh, set out into exile to Massilia uh, within... Um, uh, within very few days. Uh, Pauki was an early Latin vocab word for a few. You got the superlative here. So a very few, within a very few days. Uh, but, however, uh, his goods, they tell you to do goods for Bona. Uh, his goods, because of proctors plus accusative, so this word's accusative, because of the size of his debt and um, there's no like direct word for debt in Latin. It's uh, it's this kind of combination of two words, which if you read the note, it means of another, like an alien is another person or someone else um, because of the debt of another's bronze. And that's a Latin word for bronze. So debt, essentially, somebody else's money. Um, so because of the size of literally another's money, but we would just say debt in English. All right. So his goods, um, his goods, because of the size of debt, were sold. And hopefully you saw that this is the verb to be sold. It looks like the verb to come or arrive at. <clears throat> the I in here, um, you would not see in that verb. But it was in the note on the side to be sold. Uh, were sold. And they tell you for a song. Um, that's kind of an outdated phrase. Uh, when you say something for a song, it's super cheap. So, like, I, don't know, I guess um, this is the Latin word for like the smallest thing, like a penny. Uh, so, it was 
goods were sold for nothing, essentially. Uh, they were they were sold at auction. All of his property in Rome was confiscated and sold. So he got off easy by being sent away to a fairly nice area of the world in France. I will call back then. But all of his stuff was sold. Um, and then he uh, would go on to fight against Caesar once uh, Julius Caesar comes to power a few years later. And after he makes himself dictator for life, uh, he fights against him. And he is killed um, in a siege of a town. Uh, kind of, sorry, it escapes, escapes me where. But I do remember that um, they were attacking a fortified town. And the defenders of the town were throwing rocks over the, the wall. And he was killed by a rock. So <laughs> at the end of the day, Milo meets his fate uh, by a rock thrown. But he did get he did get to live in a nice area of France. So good for him. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this whole um, couple chapters. Uh, interesting to see two things, uh, two or different perspectives of the same event and break it down. Hopefully it gives you a little insight into what a trial uh, attorney can do and, you know, how it might be successful. It might not be. Clodius, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Also, historians think that Cicero actually never finished his speech and that um, a lot of what we has survived from today was just published Senate records and because anytime you like make a speech in the Senate, it's recorded and that Cicero submitted the speech before he gave it. And a lot of uh, historians think that he actually never finished the speech because Clodius's, um, Clodius's supporters were apparently yelling so loudly that he just walked off the stage and actually never finished the speech. And then um, it said that he wound up sending the speech to Milo when Milo was in exile and uh, Milo um, said that he's glad he didn't finish the speech because he thought that he might get executed instead of just sent into exile. So he basically like thought Cicero did an awful job. Uh, one of the most famous speakers of all of Roman history. Milo apparently thought he did a terrible job defending him. So a little amusing um, side note to the end of this. All right. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this journey. Uh, we're going to switch to something different soon to wrap up the year, and I hope you all are well. All right.